Hey, hey, often people would ask me how much food costs in Sweden. Whilst this is a very difficult question to answer, because it really depends like what you eat, how big your family is and where you go grocery shopping. In today's video, I want to attempt to give you an answer based on me and my example. I will go through a little bit like what our background is, how many family members, what our kind of mealtime dynamics are to give you a better idea of you know why we are buying that much and what we are buying and hopefully with that information you get a better idea of what it is like to go grocery shopping in Sweden and how much you actually spend and you can compare it to wherever you live and decide if it is cheaper, more expensive, or maybe the same. Before I forget, I wanted to tell you about a YouTube membership I recently started. So there is a little button which says join. If you wanted to be a member of my YouTube channel, it has a little fee per month, but you get extra content. I try to, you know, answer your questions very quickly. I give you more information, behind the scenes photos, little video clips and whatever you really want like we can discuss it i'm happy to adapt to my members this is very new to me so i want to grow with you so let's get started in our household we are four people now two adults and two children very small children so i would say they don't eat that much yet I have a four-year-old and a one-year-old. And what we normally do is actually ordering our groceries online. The website I use is called Matem and it is one of many grocery deliveries here in Sweden. Some maybe would say it's quite expensive. I haven't done the comparison, but I will actually do that. I will try some other online shops just because, you know, sometimes you order somewhere and if you're quite happy and if you think the prices are okay, you get comfortable very quickly and then I just continue to kind of order from them. It actually started when I was pregnant. I didn't want to go to the supermarket anymore. Where we lived before the supermarket was half an hour walk away and we didn't have a car yet. So yeah, half an hour going there shopping and then half an hour going back. That was quite an act. So we started online grocery shopping and yeah, because it's comfortable, we're still doing it or I'm doing it mainly in this household. Now our supermarket is only a 10 minute walk away and we do have a car. So that would also be an option. And there is a Lidl around and I know Lidl kind of has the cheapest prices, but why I'm not doing this is because when I online shop, you know, I have a certain list and I really stick to that and I cannot really look around and buy anything else. So that's quite an advantage. It would be also so much harder to go to the supermarket with the kids or at least one kids. And I feel like there's always at least one kid attached to me. So it's a bit more difficult. And also you don't get everything we buy at Lidl. So then you need to go to other shops or do a kind of like a little online shop, although it does have, you know, a minimum for free delivery. So yeah, these are the little obstacles I see when going to Lidl or going to a supermarket in general, just to give you an idea why I'm doing what I'm doing. So in a minute, I go through the grocery list, what we buy and how much each item costs. So you really see the cost of it and can compare it and decide for yourself if it is expensive where you live and overall you can decide if food is expensive in Sweden. There will be still differences even in Sweden. I heard from some friends who live in Stockholm. I live outside like half an hour outside of Stockholm. They said Stockholm is so much more expensive than anywhere outside of Stockholm. So it's possible that in Stockholm is actually much more expensive. And then again, when you probably go further in the countryside, it might be that prices might be even cheaper. That's why I'm saying it's not a very easy video to do, but at least you have one example to look at. We go shopping once a week or get a delivery once a week. That's the plan. So we kind of like don't go too much overboard. When you will see our grocery shopping in a minute, you will see that a lot of things like rice or pasta is not amongst it because we do have it at home. So each week, I just see what we have left in the cupboards, you know, even in the fridge. We had ham and cheese left, so I didn't buy any of that 
which I normally do. So I just try to assess what we really need for that week. And I also have to say that I don't cook every day. My older daughter goes to kindergarten, so she has the main meals there really. Well, breakfast, she eats porridge. And then in the evening, I'm quite easygoing. I'm a little bit German where we have like a cold dinner, which most of the time is like bread and some vegetables and fruits maybe. So I normally don't really cook in the evening. I myself eat salad almost every night. That is a little bit of a problem for my partner who comes from uh, Britain. And I think he's used to eating a warm meal every night. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's see if he watches this video. But yeah, he struggles a little bit sometimes sometimes to find what he should eat in the evening. It can be a sandwich, but yeah, he does like to eat a warm meal every now and then. But when he works from home, I try to actually cook something in the evening. And then also at the weekend, I try to cook at least one warm meal, like lunch or dinner. It depends like how our day is going. So maybe that's why you will not see as much, you know, things to cook a meal with, if that makes sense. So I also have a budget for our weekly grocery shopping, and that is 1,500 kroner, which is approximately 120 pounds or 140 US dollars. I really try to stick to that budget and when I go grocery shopping online, that's really what I spend. But it also means that every now and then we do go to a supermarket just on the side to buy some extra things especially for my partner who always thinks we have nothing in the fridge. So he sometimes buys a pizza or some crisps, chips, however you call it, or some snacks in between because normally it depends on what kind of budget I have left. I sometimes buy with our grocery shopping or not. So it can be a little bit more than 1,500 kroners per week. For transparency, I also have to mention that since January this year, I have a very um, particular way of eating. I think that also influences all the ingredients I'm buying. I'm doing intermittent fasting. I don't know if you know about that, but between 13 and 16 hours every day overnight, I fast. So most of the time I don't eat breakfast therefore so already one meal is not included and I don't really need to worry about what to eat that maybe reduces the cost a little bit as well but yeah I just wanted to mention it um, in case you're wondering where all the ingredients are for a breakfast okay let's have a look at the grocery list so the first thing you see here is basically the products they didn't have and they tried to replace it with a similar thing you can ask not to do that, but I always like to do that because I get upset if they don't have a certain ingredient sometimes. And then all the ingredients are basically summarized under categories. Here we have pharmacy, hygiene and health. By the way, it's all in Swedish. I always use Google Translate, so they don't have the website in English. But for me, it works quite well and I learn a little bit of uh, Swedish as well. But for easiness, I just translated it now. So here I bought a deal and uh, some tissues. This is also something I don't do every time. I have the grocery shopping, but I needed it, so I put it on the list. And the next kind of uh, thing is baby food and accessories. Obviously, I have two children, so I need a few things. The first one is diapers for 115 krona. Then we have some porridge here I buy for my one year old. And then some pouches for 1650, as you can see here. So this is when we go somewhere, I have something available and don't have to take anything with us. And then some snacks, mini stars for my older daughter. So yeah, this is maybe something you don't need to buy, but this was on my grocery list. Then some bread and bakery stuff. I always buy a bread, which is 43.95. It normally lasts a week, but it is also possible that sometimes I buy an extra one and then freeze it so it lasts a bit longer. This time I also bought some pizza dough to make some food for the children. So it's not always cold in the evening. It really depends, but most of the time it is. This time I'm also planning to do a little self-made pizza. And then we have some fish here, cod, which is frozen. But yeah, I try to every now and then to buy some frozen stuff so it lasts a bit longer and it's also cheaper sometimes. And then fruit and vegetables is probably the biggest category I have here. So there's aubergine, avocados, 
which are two actually, so in total like four pieces for 90 kroner. It does seem a little bit expensive, I guess. Then baby spinach. And then we have, oh, the lane. I don't know, it's weirdly translated, but it basically means bananas. And we have broccoli, two pieces actually for 20. So that was quite cheap, I would say. Kale, also two pieces. I buy a lot of salad and kale, that kind of stuff salad because of my almost daily salad I eat in the evening. And kiwi, paprika, pepper, bell peppers pumpkin butternut squash to make a soup for example which lasts a little bit as well and green onions and then some other things i bought tofu my lint chocolate 90 percent which i love 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 and i always have two pieces a day i think so dark chocolate is really good for you it's kind of a habit i have and then i bought some pork tenderloin so that's quite an exception. I try not to buy that much meat anymore, I think. So maybe eating it once a week, maybe twice a week, and, and the rest is not necessarily meat. And you can see, I mean, it's 650 grams, but it's also 105 kroner. It's a little bit more expensive. And then we have some dairy products, cheese and juice. Grapefruit juice is basically for Chris, my partner, then always grated mozzarella, which is also not cheap. It's 69 kroner. Then we have milk, we have yogurt, we have yeah whipped cream I use in my coffee. It's a bit like a keto coffee. <laughs> it has less sugar than milk. And then also eggs, of course. I love eggs. And I really opt for the free range eco everything eggs, you know, free land because that's important to me and they are therefore a little bit more expensive. And then we have things for the pantry, crushed tomatoes, kimchi I bought for the first time actually. So it's a bit like something out of the ordinary, coconut cream to make some curry, almonds uh, or extra olive oil, which is 94 kroner, which I find a bit expensive. And I use olive oil all the time. So I almost feel like we're buying one every week, which is a bit more expensive, I would say. And then I also bought some vanilla aroma. And in total, this cost 1,549.20. So I'm a little bit over budget. But yeah, this is one week of grocery shopping. What do you think about the ingredients, the prices for the ingredients? Is it what you expected? Is it surprising? Let me know down in the comments below. I can imagine that my Swedish viewers maybe are a little bit disappointed just because there is a not a lot of traditional Swedish food in there and the reason is that most of it is processed and I'm really trying to eat pure ingredients so non-processed food at the moment so therefore it's quite standard food you know a lot of fruits and vegetables as well I hope you will not be too disappointed thanks so much for watching I will see you in my next video hey do There's a special place in heaven for the trumpet and Jellicoe.